Hey everybody, Dr. Dave Mark was here and today I wanted to talk to you about something that sadly most of us are familiar with and that's pain. If you've ever had a chance to look at a brain map, there's a portion of the brain right above our ear here called our motor strip. And on that motor strip you have all of your somatosensory. So when you hear the word soma, think stuff you can touch. And sensory, of course, is the tactile response or the, the feeling that is evoked from touching that stuff. So our somatosensory cortex allows us to perceive our environment. And we're really receptive creatures. I mean, we've got uh, so many nerve endings in our hands, in our lips, in our tongues. And then we also have sensory input visually and auditorily. Well, on this somatosensory map, there's another name for it, and it's called homunculus. Look that one up, and you'll see a really funny picture. The homunculus is a map of the entire body mapped out on the brain. And the way that they figured that out is with live patient open brain surgeries, where they actually put a little bit of an electrical stimuli in each little spot of that map and ask the patient where they felt it. And so they were able to map out everything so that you can go from the midline suture here all the way out to just above the ear and you can get every single body part mapped out. And the interesting thing is, is that the left side of the body is mapped out here on the right and the right side of the body is mapped out here on the left and they cross over. So if you've ever encountered an individual who's had brain damage on one side of the brain or a stroke or you know, anything that negatively impacted the function of that region, oftentimes they will have symptoms on the other side of the body. Well, down the spinal cord, there's also crossover gates where information travels. And that happens at every single nerve root level. So you can actually use this to your benefit. You're like, why, why are you telling me all this? This all comes into play when a physician knowingly examines an individual and wants to help them to mitigate pain. I laid out this body map on the brain so that you can kind of have a, a mental picture of how this plays out. Now, the individual that brought all of this together for me was a um, retired military who had lost their lower leg in Iraq and they um, came and they, they were talking and they said, you know, anytime that I am uh, intimate with my wife, I notice I have extreme excruciating pain in my phantom limb. <laughs> like, okay, that's really interesting, but I think I might have an understanding of that and we might be able to help you with that. Well, it turns out that on the body map, if you look at where the feet and the genitalia are, they're literally neighbors in the brain map. And what happens is when you lose input from any body region, whatever the adjacent region is neurologically in the brain, those nuclei, that, that region of brain, the brain hasn't been damaged, it's only been the peripheral portion, it starts to recruit all of those nerve cells. And so it says, hey, I'll take you. Come on over here and work for me. So then when that adjacent region now gets stimulated, sometimes people will experience phantom pain in a region that no longer exists. You see how that works? That the brain can actually work in a very plastic way that it can start to recruit information from other regions. It's fascinating. Well, you can use this to your advantage. So there's brain-based therapies that people can tap into that allow you to literally interrupt and change these signals. One of them that we love to work with here in our own clinic, and, there, and there's clinics all over the country that can do this, is direct current. So there's DC stim where you can actually use the anode and the cathode to draw pain away from a region and calm down a region that uh, might not even exist, but the brain still perceives that it does. Um, that, that type of therapy really doesn't take a great deal of time. It does take a little bit of repetition and to get it right because there's a certain amount of mapping that is required 
to get the location specific, but I've seen it time and again for uh, post-surgical scarring, adhesions, um, individuals that have had nerve damage either chemically or structurally where something has been um, crushed. Uh, th there's so many different types of injuries that can initiate a pain cascade, but understanding and proper application of DC stim is what, what that's called, direct current, and proper application of using the anode and the cathode in the regions necessary can inhibit and turn down that pain cascade. That is one of a number of different neurological therapies that people can do. One, one more component of this, and I mentioned early on in today's video, when people have chronic pain, it often leads to depression. Well, it can also lead to anxiety states. And one of the reasons for that is because our center of emotion, the amygdala, which is smack dab in the middle of the brain, down a little bit lower in front of the brain stem, that allows us to experience um, both uh, anger, uh, stress, and, and actually not process information efficiently. It's kind of a primitive brain. And when we lose the uh, capacity to dampen that because some of these pain centers are overriding it, it almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where that pain pattern starts to get ahead of our ability to control it. And so there are neural feedback techniques for that, things that an individual can do to bring up the function of the frontal lobe so that they can better calm down the output from some of our sensory regions deeper in the brain. So I, I share this with you just to plant a seed of hope. So if an individual is suffering from pain syndromes, and th again, this is just a slice of it. I don't mean to imply that this is the alpha and omega because there's so many different aspects to pain. But I hope to plant a seed that people understand that we feel pain out here, up here. And if you haven't looked at the neurochemistry and the neurological function in terms of the dynamics of how the brain and the body are talking together, and all you're reaching for is medications to try and mask something, it will give you short-term relief, probably, but I find that those are the slippery slopes where people fall into addictions and other behaviors that aren't conducive to the lifestyle and the person that they really wanted to be. So I share this with you because I see hope applied on a daily basis and I love to see lives changed and, and, and people get that aha moment where they realize, wow, you know what? I don't have to be drug dependent. I can actually control how I'm feeling by learning how to optimize my brain function and how it perceives my body. So many different things that an individual can do, learn, and apply in that regard. So I hope that's motivating you to ask another question so that if you or a loved one is suffering from anything in regards to chronic pain, that you'll reach out to a, a functional medicine provider that is trained in these areas and be able to help you, get you back on the right path. Own your health. Be in charge of your body and have a great day.